yeah diva to youtube welcome back to my channel this is a long awaited video and it is my recap of the previous session that i just had before i get started into the recap i'm going to go ahead and reintroduce myself for all my new subscribers since there's a lot of new people around these days allow me to reintroduce myself my name is ho ho h to the o v hi howdy wagwan hola ciao my name is Melissa Marie. It's awesome to see you guys here today. Thank you so much for stopping by. My channel can be fun sometimes, but to be honest, the word that best describes my content here is real. I mostly film videos that surround a nursing and lifestyle. So if you're interested in any of those content areas, make sure you do take a moment to subscribe. Yes, I went to a previous nursing school. It was an accelerated nursing program. Yes, I have a previous degree, previous degrees in Spanish languages and literature, Latin American studies, chemistry, and public service. Yes, I did the most in undergrad. I don't know what I was thinking. I currently attend Chamberlain for nursing school. I dropped out of my previous nursing school. My stats to attend Chamberlain were GPA was like 3.3 to 3.6. Don't quite remember. My HESI score was 94%, 95%, something of the sort. I am currently taking adult health one and nutrition, even though I already took nutrition three times. I am newly engaged and I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia where the money is not but I'm still here for now and I am 25 years old. Though I should say I'm 24 because my 25th birthday was in the panoramic and I said I was going to redo it this year. My birthday is coming up. I'm an Aries so if you are an Aries or whatever your sign is drop it down below in the comments so I can know what kind of signs I got working with on my channel. Let's see if you can get every single sign except male Scorpios. I'm okay if I don't see any of you guys, but everybody else, let's see where you are. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. This session, I took fundamentals, patient care, and pharmacology. I know I keep on saying it, but this session was definitely intense. It just gets more and more intense as time goes on, but I guess I should expect that with nursing school. It's not going to get easier. It's going to get more difficult. So let's go ahead and start with fundamentals. Fundamentals patient care is your first clinical experience class. When you look at the whole spread of the curriculum grid that you have to take at Chamberlain, your first class that you have a lab for is fundamental skills, which we did last session. And then this session is fundamentals patient care. So generally outside of the pan pizza, you would be going into a live clinical setting usually starting you off in like a nursing home or something of the sort but with the periplatypus we haven't really had a chance to go out and venture to different clinical settings there were a select few group of my classmates who were able to go to grady hospital for a clinical and they had actually sent out an email and asked people if they wanted to volunteer to go i did not volunteer because the requirements that it took to actually go to the clinical were ridiculous i had just gotten compliant and complio and so I was not about to go ahead and pay an extra two to five hundred dollars to get fingerprinting, background clearance. It was just way too much in the span of a week. We had gotten a week notice to do all of this for Grady and I was just not here for it. We would have also had to have gone to the hospital to get your ID badge and do some kind of TB or whatever train. It was a lot. I instead did virtual clinical, but we'll get more into clinical a little bit later. In addition to this session beginning your live clinical time at Chamberlain, it is also the session where you begin your simulation time. Every session you are supposed to have at least one on campus live clinical session and so this session we had one for fundamentals as well and for me that was in my first week. Additionally this session <laughs> a lot of things really changed this session. We got a med calc exam but like a real med calc exam on the first day of class. In previous sessions especially last session we had a bunch of conquering calculation med math like games and practice problems and so really that was all in preparation for this exam because it's on the first day of class of the session. So I know some of you guys who are watching this video today, tomorrow you have a med math exam in your class. And that was a little bit stressful only because they had told us about it literally like a week before finals. And so you really didn't have time to prepare. Though granted it was Christmas break for me. So we had two weeks te technically. But for students who are transitioning between fundamental skills and fundamentals patient care from February to March, you have what, four days, five days. But I am gonna do a video specifically on men math calculations following this video, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. On our first day, we had our men math calculations exam and actually very, very easy. Compared to those conquering calculation games and 
other practice problems we've had in previous sessions those were like a lot more difficult than this actual exam the thing about the med math exam is that you have to achieve a certain score in order to pass and each class that number will get more and more and more so you started off being able to get 16 out of 20 then it goes to 17 out of 20 then it goes to 18 out of 20 then it goes to 19 out of 20 then it goes to 20 out of 20. if you are not successful on the quiz meaning that you got below the minimum threshold score then you would have to retake it and for the med calculation exam you, you get three attempts to do it in between each attempt you have to do a bunch of busy work like brain sharks and um, a few ATIs and all different kinds of stuff like that so that they feel like you are actually prepared to pass it the next time and so I can't really speak much on that because I always pass on the first time I just feel like I'm not, I'm not even going to waste time not doing well I'm just going to pass the first time get it off my mind because we're going to have a long session ahead of us anyway and I just want to focus on my schoolwork and other things pass your med calc exam on the first try y'all don't be don't say i'm gonna just go in there and see what happens pass it on your first try okay and fundamentals patient care to be honest much like other classes we've had at chamberlain i really don't understand why fundamentals patient care was separated from fundamental skills because it's all really one big class but in fundamentals patient care we did go over the specific topics of the nursing process, pain management, the sleep cycle slash the rest cycle, the older adult, fluid and electrolytes. That was a really big thing. Fluid and electrolytes, bowel elimination, urinary elimination, perioperative nursing, managing the stages of grief, death and dying, hospice care, palliative care, that kind of stuff. It was definitely different topics compared to last session, but you always are going to build on your knowledge from previous sessions. You're never just going to be able to get over the class and be like, okay, I'm done, whatever, moving on. I don't, I honestly don't really have that many feelings about fundamentals because I just feel like it's a filler class and whatever I'm learning here, I'm just going to hear it again in adult health, but in more in depth at that point, then I'm going to hear it again and again as we climb the totem pole as far as nursing classes go. And I'm going to hear the same thing once I start actually working, you know, so it's okay. It's, it's good to get the introduction now. I just wish the introduction didn't cost me $5,000. I probably spent a total of like two to 5% of my time this session studying for fundamentals. When I tell you I feel like the material is completely intuitive, it really just didn't require that much time out of me. And I'm only saying this because pharmacology is going to require your entire life. As I said before, we did clinical, either you had the live setting or virtual. So for virtual clinical, Chamberlain, I'm not sure if all campuses do this, but my particular campus purchased a program called iHuman. iHuman is like a simulation online program in which you're able to see a actual patient. You see like a kind of like a mannequin looking patient and they have a diagnosis of whatever they have. So Parkinson's or they, maybe they had a hip surgery. And then you get basic stats, you get their age, their height, their weight, their date of birth, admitting vital signs and admitting physician and the nurse's note that gave the patient to you. So basically like a handoff note. And then you're able to progress through this program and basically assess your patient. So you can give them a full assessment. You can get a full history from them. If they are nonverbal, there will be another person in the room. I had a patient who was nonverbal. He was actually dying. And so his daughter was in the room. She answered a lot of my questions. And so it can be, it can seem kind of realistic. It's kind of cool at points. I enjoyed iHuman. What I didn't enjoy was the paperwork afterwards, but we're going to get to that. But iHuman itself is pretty cool. Of course, it's different when you're doing like a book work type thing, which is a real life experience, but it's good to just get my feet wet in terms of learning how to manage different symptoms. So as you're going through the program, you're learning more and more about your patient and then you're also getting these little quizzes throughout. So you might have like a four question assessment, a five question assessment, you'll have a compare and contrast section, you'll have a matching section, and then you'll have like a priority section, which is really, that was one of my favorite sections because I do so horrible in it. And I think it's important as a nurse, you're, you're definitely gonna need to know how to prioritize your patients and their needs. Of course you have your ABCs come first, that's always, that's a given. But outside of that, you know, if this patient is in pain, is that an acute issue or is that like a routine thing? Or is it a stat, you know, do you need to have a stat order for something or is it more routine? Like, and the difference between what those words mean. As you move through iHuman, then at the end of that for a lab, what you're required to submit is called a patient care documentation form. Now this is where my problem comes in with the virtual clinical thing. Because iHuman itself is cool. 
However, the patient care documentation, which is eight pages long, by the way, is so cumbersome. It's very tedious. It gets easier as you move through the session, but I will say like my first week and maybe even a little bit of my second week, it took me all day, like all day to complete that form. I had clinical from 6 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. So your clinical for fundamentals patient care will be five to five and a half hours. I know some people, did I say six? I meant 7 a.m. I know some people had clinical from seven to 11 and some from 7 to 11.30. I guess it depends on how strict your clinical instructor is. Mine was pretty strict. So we were there from 7, and by 7 I mean 6.45, until 11.30 a.m. Then I had from 11.30 a.m. until midnight, so basically 12 hours to complete my form. The first week, it took me literally like eight hours, so it took me like most of the night. The second week, maybe about six to eight hours. And then after that, I was able to just do it in about two or three hours. It also depends on how strict your instructor is as well as in terms of how you're able to multitask. Because for me, I was able to complete it quicker because I started doing it as I'm moving through iHuman. So as I'm moving through iHuman, I'm completing the different sections. I'm doing the assessment sheet, which has vital signs, which has all of the different systems, GI, GU, respiratory, cardiovascular, you know, I'm doing it as I'm doing my assessment instead of having to do my assessment and take a bunch of notes and then going back and translating and then going back and clicking through and trying to figure out, okay, how do I fill in this part of the sheet? How do I fill in this part or whatever? I started doing it together because anybody got time for that. My clinical instructor did not like that. She wanted us to go through iHuman by itself absorb all the information and then at the end go back and try and transfer the information doing it that way though just takes so much more time and that wasn't it and if you've not had iHuman yet or anything like virtual this might sound like really foreign to you but please do not feel overwhelmed guys take a breath come on take a breath with me hold on There you go. You got it. You got it. Don't don't feel overwhelmed, guys, because it sounds like a lot, but it's really not that bad. Your first one or two weeks might feel a little bit overwhelming, but you really, really got it. Like, you got it. I'm actually going to go ahead and insert a video of exactly what the patient care documentation looks like here. So the first page, you know, you have the medication that the patient is on. If they have other comorbidities, of course, you have to consider those medications that they might take at home. So example, if they have diabetes, then they might be on metformin. You have to put those medications in as well as whatever the physician has prescribed for their admission status. So whether that's pain meds or anti-anxiety or anti-nausea. I'm trying to use my nursing terms a little bit better. So whether that's anti-emetics or analgesics, you gotta put them in. Then after that, you get to the IS bar section, which is just like your initial assessment, pretty much of the patient upon initially looking at your patient. And then you go ahead to your actual physical assessment, which is what you would do on the, on the patient. So you're able to do your vital signs, you check blood pressure, temperature, you can check their eyes, check for Perla, you do all of that. And then you get to a section where is the labs. A lot of times you'll get a bunch of patients who really do not have any lab orders. It's in that section you just pretty much put NA throughout the whole page because they do not like it when you don't when you leave any boxes blank. This might be special to each individual professor or clinical instructor, but for mine, she said don't leave no boxes blank because I'm gonna think you just skipped it on purpose. So we have to put an NA. Then you got to the healthcare provider orders, and that could be anything from like a Foley or ins and outs or activity levels or vital sign orders you want to put all that stuff in this section then you got just a small little then you had to do like a concept map so depending on what the diagnosis of the patient was you would go ahead and put in like nursing interventions reason why medical diagnosis medications regarding this sorry nursing diagnosis medications regarding the diagnosis nursing interventions patient progress all of that stuff Then you have to do a medications card. For the medications card, you just did one. Of, you just chose one of the medications that the patient was taking, and you just filled it out. And then, lastly, you had to pick a nursing skill to write about with regards to the patient. So, if they were immobile, you might want to write about turning the patient or helping them with the bathroom. So maybe bedpan usage or compression. 
stockings, sequential compression devices. You can use anything that would make sense to help your immobile patient succeed or you, you could do like patient teaching on um, respiratory secretion. So maybe incentive spirometry usage, like anything like that. But anyway, that documentation, all eight pages took a long time. The other thing about it is that it had to be handwritten. And so that's part of the reason why it took so long because you had to handwrite all of the documents. Handwriting does include, if you, if you have an iPad, you can definitely just write on your screen as long as you're writing and not typing. That's really just the main thing with the, the clinical is just that documentation. So if you do a live clinical, I'm not even sure if you had to do that. I don't think you have to complete all of that. I think that's just for virtual and that's really annoying because I already know next session I'm gonna be virtual. I was supposed to be at Berman Commons, a little Jew uh, Jewish retirement community, and I was really excited to go there, but my clinical got switched to virtual, so I'm back on the iHuman next term. All in all, fundamentals patient care was really not a hard class. I ended the class with an A, and like I said, I put in minimal effort to succeeding in this class and I did fine. Not telling you to be like me, I'm just letting you know how it was. I'm just trying to keep it real. Now, on to pharmacology. Hmm. I gotta take a deep breath and release from that class because I feel like the chains of hell had me bound for eight weeks. I'm very happy to be done. Remember how I said I only studied like two to 5% for fundamentals? earlier reason being is because the other 95 percent of my study time was legitimately for pharmacology pharmacology is a very deep class is it goes deep it's deep y'all i will say i feel like there were a lot of resources for it so if i feel i feel like if i had to take this class without the resources they gave me it would have been much more difficult so i'm i'm kind of trying not to complain because it's a hard class and you know, you're gonna have hard classes in nursing school and you just gotta get over it, but woo child. Um, so let's get into it. One thing with the pharmacology system, especially at Chamberlain Atlanta, there is really not an abundance of great teachers. So if you're somebody who's sensitive to professors, as I always say, you're really gonna have to make sure you get a good professor because I can 100% see how having a certain professor could make or break your grade because my particular professor, she she was horrible. I don't even know how to say it because she seems like a sweet person, honestly, but she really just did not understand how to teach pharmacology. And she even said that she usually, usually teaches a certain specialty in the upper levels and pharmacology is not her usual class. So really she would just be reading off of the PowerPoint and it's like, well, I can also read the PowerPoint. I'm really good at reading. So can you please explain to me how these things connect? Tell me how metformin is going to make a diabetic better. How? You would ask these questions. You'd be like, uh, professor, how do corticosteroids help patients who are having asthma exacerbations? And she'll be like, because it helps them. And you'll be like, Okay, the caliber of professors in pharmacology is kind of trash, but that being said, there are so also some really good professors. I was really hoping for the professor that I had in health assessment, but I did not have her. So I was sad about that, but I still watched her lecture recordings. I sure did, because I wanted all the tea on these medications. I wanted to understand them. I wanted to understand how they worked, why the doctors chose them, why we're administering them, how we gotta administer them, what not to do, what to do. I wanted to know it all. With each exam, they gave you a medications list. So you weren't going in completely blind. And a lot of the medications, to be honest, they're things you've seen on commercials and they're things that you've seen in life. If you have any sickly people in your family, you've definitely seen a lot of these medications. Like for example, for the first exam, we had Oseltamivir. Tobramycin, gentamicin, vancomycin, tetracycline, these are antibiotics. Ciproflaxin, metronidazole, fluconazole, diphenhydramine, albuterol, theophylline, vancomycin, ampicillin, penicillin. So that was for the first exam. So the, for me, the first exam was mad easy. I got an A on the first exam. So antibiotics, antifungals, etc. Second exam, it got real. Second exam was hard. And they kept saying like, oh, the exams are gonna get more and more difficult. But exam two was the hardest of all three exams. They said exam three would be worse, but they lied. Exam two was the hardest. So for exam two, we had cardiac medications, 
and it was like amlodipine, clonidine, losartan, digoxin, metoprolol, lisinopril, atenolol, methyl dopa, hydralazine, nitroglycerin, deltiazam, carbetalol, amiodarone, adenosine, propanolol, nifedipine, lidocaine, nitrate, sildenafil, literally <laughs> valsartan, verapamil. Yeah, so those are all cardiac medications. So just knowing like ACE blockers versus ARVs, you know, sartans, calcium channel blockers, uh, potassium wasting versus potassium sparing, diuretics, it was just so much. And then for this particular section, I felt like it was really important to actually understand the pathophysiology so that you understood the medication so that when you got a question, it was easier for you to be able to make a, a educated guess if you weren't too sure what the answer was, if you knew all the background information for it. Now for the third exam, it wasn't that bad. We had psych meds, neuro meds, endocrine, like pituitary, thyroid medications. Then we had GI, GU medications. So it wasn't too bad. For that, it was like permethazine, antacids, like Tums, y'all, sodium bicarb, Seneca, lactobacillus, psyllium. People have psyllium husk in their, in their cabinets. I have psyllium husk in my cabinets, you know? Bismuth subsilate. I think I said that right. That's peptabismol. Omeprazole, Prilosec, Prednisone. If you got asthma or any kind of inflammatory issue, you know what Prednisone is, honey. Prednisone, Vasopressin, Desmopressin, Somatotropin, Peen, Baclofen, Valproic Acid, Lithium. I can't see Lithium and not think about Nirvana. <laughs> Ooh, that's a throwback. Risperidone. Glipizide, Aspar, Detamir, Metformin, etc. It was also diabetic medications on there as well. So that was exam three and that was our final exam. All I have to say about pharmacology is make sure you utilize outside resources, especially if your professor is not good. So for me, I use simple nursing, RN or hottie nurse as my classmates call him. I ended up okay in the class. I ended with a 91.9%, so it's a B plus, but it's an A in my head. Um, the thing I would love to stress with these classes, especially like a pharmacology type class, is make sure you do well early on. Like don't go into your first exam saying, oh, I'm gonna just see how it is. I'm gonna just wing it and catch up at the end because that's usually my move. Like that's usually how I operate. I'm just gonna wing the first exam or first assessment to kind of see how the questions are and then I adjust my study habits to that. I don't think it's worth it for a class like pharmacology because you want to be able to have as least stress as possible going into the final because it just feels like there's a higher and higher level of stakes that you have writing on and it's just not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth the stress. Like I went into my final exam for fundamentals needing to get 40 out of 200. So a 20% and an 80 out of 200 in pharmacology in order to pass my classes. And so I was very calm. I was like, I need less than 50% to pass. Like I'm at least going to get 50% right. Like I'm not dumb like that. And you guys will be fine in pharmacology. It will be okay. A couple of things that are popping up in my head as I'm sitting here doing this video that I forgot to mention. So in fundamentals, as well as pharmacology, you have your first two introductions into the CMS world. CMS stands for Content Mastery Series and it's, it's an exam that we take every session pretty much in one of the core subjects for nursing. Or you didn't really know how to study for it and when you ask the professors how to study for it, they just kind of told you, you just got to do it. Like, it's, there's nothing to tell you because it's on everything. Another thing I wanted to mention as well is that Remember all those videos we had took last semester in fundamentals skills with Foley catheter insertion, insertion nasal gastric tube suction and removal and all that stuff? Well, <laughs> it comes back in this session. Yes, it does. So we have to do a video in fundamentals for med administration and it was subcutaneous PO and IM injection. And I had an attitude because we just did that. Literally, we just did sub Q and PO. So I said we should have just had to do IM, not all three all over again. So I wasn't finna do the video. But I did it anyway because I was trying to pass the class or whatever. So I did them. But I was mad. I was annoyed. Especially because it was in a time frame where we had, we already had had an exam. We already had had two exams in the CMS all in that same time period. 
plus pharmacology exists like pharmacology was taking up my life <laughs> like ooh, okay so i didn't have time for no busy work like this i was annoyed the ruas for both classes were super easy for pharmacology the rua was just uh, my brochure and for fundamentals it was i don't remember but i think it was like only two pages or three pages at most that we had to write another thing i want to mention as far as pharmacology goes when you're trying to figure out like what to most focus on and to study when you're preparing your medication cards and stuff because you're going to have to do a lot of those medication cards make sure you focus on adverse effects adverse effects are super important so an adverse effect of a medication could be like nausea hives you know any kind of anaphylaxis or allergic reaction um hair loss weight gain those are adverse effects so those are important to know as well as contraindications so if a patient is pregnant they shouldn't take this medication that's important to know if a patient eats a lot of spinach they shouldn't take this medication that's important to know also i would say nursing implications which goes hand in hand with patient teaching and you want to know as a nurse how do i fit into this situation making sure that my patient is taken care of the best possible so those are the sections I focus on. Every other section doesn't really matter. Like the mechanism of action of the medication, it's not a pathophysiology class, so that doesn't really matter. It might be important for you to be able to understand the medication, but you're not gonna get tested on that really. Therapeutic usage, unless it's some like psych drugs, you really don't need to know that. But therapeutic, like for lithium, the therapeutic range is important. The joxin, it's important. So it's certain medications that you do need to know therapeutic range, but otherwise you won't really need to know that kind of stuff. That's all I have for my recap of this session. I'm super excited to be jumping into my next session. And yeah, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any requests or questions, make sure you continue to comment them down below. You guys are good about that, okay? Y'all y'all be commenting. I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out and then jump right into my medications video.